We need to get some more 4x4s to finish the beds up in the field. So in the meantime, we're just going to go ahead and put hay down on the beds we've already got built. Um, we're not going to till it or turn it or anything. We're just going to put a thick layer of hay on it. A lot of this area has really good topsoil. It has, some of it has compost where I've planted there. And most of it has had at least a covering of wood chips. So we're just going to hay those beds to kind of stop the weeds and the grass from taking over so quickly in the spring. And it'll also help decompose any grass and wood chips that are still on the surface and just overall make the whole bed a lot more rich. couple of things about using hay. A lot of people have the concern that if you use hay, weeds will sprout in it. And it is quite possible because, you know, we get unearthed seeds as we unroll it. Um, those seeds won't be as rooted, rooted in as seeds that you would normally find out in your field or in your lawn. Another thing about hay that I personally like, it's really lightweight which means that you can cover a lot of uh, you can cover a lot of square feet with one bundle full. Whereas if you're moving mulch or some other like rock, stone, some other method of mulch, they're going to be quite heavy. And I'm moving stuff uphill, so it's kind of a almost a vacation to be using straw or hay instead of wood chips or peanut or peanut shell. Another, what was, there was one more thing I wanted to say about the hay and I don't remember what it was. Putting hay down will suppress the weeds that are underneath and I will still be planting in ground in these. Well, I'll have a couple of ways of planting. I'll either plant in ground, I'll just move the hay aside and dig into the ground, or I will move the hay aside and just backfill with compost. Those are the ways I will plant in beds that deep, and I will show you that in the spring when it's planting time. This right here will give it all winter to break down, and that's another thing with hay. It breaks down fairly quickly compared to other mulches as well, so it might not last quite as long, but it's quicker. That particular bale of hay that we have, that we've been working out of, that was hay that was left out in the field and got wet and so it was no longer suitable for consumption, animal consumption. So you'll find those usually sometime whenever they're starting to cut hay again or in about mid spring, late spring. That's when I personally in my area start to see those bales of hay come up for sale. Like whenever the farmers are putting up their hay for the next year, they'll start to get rid of excess or in this like Whenever they're able to start grazing their animals in the field again, they'll start to get rid of some of the stuff that maybe wasn't kept properly or they just no longer need. So you can usually get it at a discount as opposed to the fresh stuff that you would purchase if you were going to feed an animal. So that's what I do. We get the stuff that someone just left out in the rain or they had a barn leak or, you know, whatever, whatever their circumstance is, we just buy it on a discount because we're using it for gardening. So it doesn't matter if it's a little moldy or it's got a little bit of mush or rot in it somewhere. We don't care about that. That just helps our beds out. On some of my other videos, you saw me put on a mask whenever I was dealing with hay. And the reason I do that is because it does emit a dust. And that dust can make some people sick. Sometimes it makes me cough a little bit and it makes me short of breath. So I do like to wear a mask whenever I'm doing that and I have a few left over from the pandemic so 
I just grab one of those, throw it on, and deal with my hay, and I, bre I breathe better at breathe better for it. Um, that's just a little tip you may or may not want to use. It's up to you. Do what you want. All right. Um, I'm going to show you real quick what these beds look like. As you can see, we, we filled these quite thick. Let's see. Here's what they look like with hay. If my grass were still green, you would be able to see the difference. But right now, it kind of blends in. But it will help suppress weeds. And it will make my plants happier come planting time. Also, I just want to say that I'm not opposed to any type of mulch. I use them all. I use whatever's available to me, whatever I can find. And also, I want to say that there's a good chance in the springtime we will go back through after everything's planted and started starting to grow. There's a chance we'll go back through and cover these with wood chips anyways. Because it does help break down that straw a little quicker than if it's just a straw covering. We just layer in things. Okay, we don't have the materials down in the field to make the new bed, so we've come up here to the wood pile just to grab more 4x4s four or, you know, boards that are roughly those dimensions to go outline the We'll the probably bed. use ones that are like this, like these here. These will get used. It's been raining, so some of them are kind of heavy. And we'll just carry them down and use them to form beds. So we got this bed put in today. And I've got hay on it. It's very thick. But as it breaks down and rains and snows over the winter, it'll settle. Now, when we use these four buys, we know they're not going to last forever. They're untreated, so they're eventually going to rot away. But the hope is, by the time they rot away, they'll be so established, they won't need definition anymore. Or, if they do, we'll just replace it at the time. Either way, this will get us through several years before it's even a concern or worry. Because we live on a mountainside, when you live on mountainside, there's irrigation problems. So, I'll go down here for this so I can get a better view. Before I'm able to put a bed in this area below the one I just showed you, we need to fix the drainage because it was getting a little wide here at this point. So what we're doing is we're digging it out so it flows better and we're taking the stuff we're digging out of there and creating a mound right here to act as protection against what will be the back of my flower bed or very close to the back of my flower bed. And that'll just keep it from getting flooded. 30 years ago, this entire ditch line was all stone. There was no dirt in it. And now I'm able to shove my 
shovel all the way down in. This is all just erosion that's come down from up on the hill or off the bank here, or from over there, decomposed weeds, leaves. It's, it's built its soil up the natural way. But our goal is to get it back down to where it's flowing good, channeling the water from pond up there and from the spring up there into one creek and through our culvert as opposed to coming up here and flooding the bank. So, many, many moons of slow erosion have just filled this, this whole area in. But you can see the soil is good and dark and rich as far down as I can dig. So everything that grows up against this is going to be getting good nutrients. There's still a lot of clay in it. It's still sticky, but it's good soil. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and end this here. I had hoped to bring you this hillside right in this area completed but due to the fact we have now taken on irrigation it's going to be a little bit before we actually finish Whenever this. Whenever we're further along on the irrigation or we're doing something up here besides just digging we'll show you the progress but for now thank you for watching I will see you next time.